Since the delivery of Honda's electric fit, Torrance is all about electric vehicles or EVs. And now a popular car rental company is also getting on board. Reporter Jacqueline Quinn has more. Um, one thing that they are not used to is fucking up the car. That's an Enterprise employee explaining and showing off their new Nissan electric car, now available to rent. It's part of an effort by the company in the South Bay City's councils to promote more sustainable transportation. The majority of travel is five miles or less. You go to the grocery store, you go to your local convenience store, you're going to the mall. Five miles at a time or less is ideal for an electric car. So it's a pretty dirty material and a lot of it is from the carbon emitted from vehicles on the road. But researchers say if more people switch over to zero emissions cars, this can be significantly reduced. Robert Fortunato, a nearby resident and public supporter of cleaner air, is concerned about how pollution affects people's health. We're 10 blocks from the beach. We thought we would have clean air, but in fact it's full of burnt carbon. And that burnt carbon is known to cause heart disease, lung disease and cancer. He thinks the next industrial revolution should begin here, but this time much cleaner. Why shouldn't it be us? Why should it be Japan, Germany or China? Uh, when in fact most of the technology is actually invented here. Mayor Frank Scotto says the city is trying to lead the way in cleaner burning cars and believes options like these help make it easier for people to transition even in a future where gas prices may drop. The price of gasoline would drop significantly as the usage would stop, but then that changes the way we view the necessity to do things all over the world. Those who are new to electric cars have a few things to consider. I don't know if you want to start driving up and down the coast just yet, but for your everyday uh, errands and going to work and coming home, it's more than practical. And for the time being, there are also some added incentives. People love single man carpool, zero emission, so that's one of the big pluses. Um, the fact that they saved on gas for the week. Understandably, new technologies have learning curves, but Councilmember Bill Sutherland thinks change is overdue. I'm an older generation. I'm spoiled. I grew up with the gas engine. But we have to adapt. What we did 30 years ago, 50 years ago, we can't keep on doing. The local enterprise branch here currently has five Nissan Leafs in its fleet, with the company hoping to expand its EV car options to even more locations in Southern California. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jacqueline Quinn. For more information, go to enterprise.com. January 2nd was the culmination of the Rose Float Association's hard work throughout the year. and They recently had the chance to celebrate their past wins and now their certain future. Reporter Lily Mojica explains. Winding down from the big day, the Torrance Rose Float Association recently honored their hardworking volunteers. I always love when it's this time of year and it's not hectic and chaotic and I'm not pulling my hair out wondering where our carnations win or what we're putting where. It's bittersweet. There are parts that I won't miss, but there are a lot of things that I will miss. The interaction with all the people and every, you know, everything like that I'll, I'll really miss. Mary Hoffman, president of the Torrance Rose Float Association for the past 16 years, is now retiring. And with the recent $75,000 donation from aerospace company Ace Clearwater, the show is sure to go on. We did get a generous donation from Ace Clearwater. Um, they're an aerospace company, and but we still have to do the other half of the fundraising. They donated half of the half of the float, and so we're going to have to do the other half. So it's going to be a lot of work, but I'm looking forward to it. Roseanne Villalobos and the rest of the 2012-2013 Rose Float Association Board of Directors were formally installed by Mayor Frank Scotto, as he also took the time to thank all of the hardworking volunteers. I know that you wonder to yourself if anybody really cares, but truly mean this, when we see that float go down the parade route that morning, we want to thank all of you from the bottom of our hearts for the great job you've done. Volunteers received awards of appreciation for this last parade, but work on the next float is already underway. Well, we're here celebrating, of course, and, uh, and for me it's uh, back to square one, but one that I really welcome and uh, look forward to talking how we should approach it this year. I'm assured by uh, Raul that he'll have a great float for next year, and here's the theme right here, oh, the places that we'll go. And, uh, 
We're very pleased. Over the years, they've done such an exceptional job of winning awards. But uh, I, I know that next year we will have a float that we'll all be proud of. All of the hard-working volunteers finally got a chance to get together tonight and celebrate, look back at all of their hard work for last year. That paid off in a trophy, the Governor's Trophy. And now for 2012-2013, moving forward with the new slogan, Oh, the places you'll go. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Lily Mojica. Thanks, Lily. And since becoming a nonprofit organization, the Torrance Rose Float Association is looking for donations and they're always looking for volunteers. For more information, visit TorrenceRoseFloat.com. Well, seniors at the Bartlett Senior Center got an early Valentine thanks to some talented teens. Reporter Lily Mojica takes us to a special show. Ryan Hirano and other Torrance High School students are doing a special kind of community service today. It involves lots of music, singing, and even a little bit of dancing. We really wanted to reach out to the community, so we felt it was a good idea to come and entertain the seniors as we are representing what's coming next for Torrance. Hirano is a member of the Torrance Youth Council, an organization that serves as an advisory board for the city at council meetings. They work toward helping their community, including places like Bartlett Senior Center. Uh, senior citizens don't really get to see people, and it'd be nice to give them, like, you know, a show. The seniors here at the Bartlett Center appreciated all of the diverse talent, but the friendship and company the students provided was definitely the highlight of the day. Oh, I've been here about two years maybe. I retired about three years ago, so I started looking for stuff to do and I uh, found this place and it's, uh, it's comfortable here. It's uh, something that I do maybe two, three times a week. The Bartlett Center provides classes, weekday lunches, exercise, and extracurricular activities to a number of seniors from Torrance and around the South Bay. But today, they were in for a special treat. A nice, nutritious lunch and some good entertainment. There was an abundance of talent here today with a variety of acts. The youth of Torrance put together a great show for the seniors at the Bartlett Center today. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Lily Mojica. Thanks, Lily. For more information on the Bartlett Senior Center, call 310-320-5918. And speaking of teens, the attic was recently the place to hear about handling high school and college. Reporter Lily Mojica explains. But what it takes to get into... A select group of Torrance teens were invited to a unique meeting recently. During the 2012 Youth Forum, students heard from special guest speakers about topics geared to better prepare them for high school graduation and college acceptance. AP classes like biology or calculus or literature AP that most of us take senior year, these are all relatively intense classes. Students also discussed creative ways to stay ahead of the game, such as social networking and leadership skills. Members of the City Council offered guidance and support. Who's the most important people in the room? It's really you guys. It's not, it's not us, because you're the future of our city, so uh, that's why we're here to support you. Guest speaker Jay Conger, professor of leadership studies at Claremont McKenna College, also spoke to the students about the importance of networking and how to enhance their leadership skills. The students took with them a lot of valuable information. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Lily Mojica. Thanks, Lily. This was the 30th Annual Youth Forum. To learn more about the Youth Council, visit the city website at torrentca.gov. Welcome back. In case you haven't noticed, Jen and I are wearing our Torrance Centennial pins. That's right. In honor of the city's 100th year, our city cable team will be wearing these beautiful magnetic pins, and you can too. You can show your civic pride by purchasing an official Centennial pin now for sale on the Centennial website. The magnetic pins are just $5. You can also purchase much more memorable items like the Centennial brick and have your family's name engraved or purchase a sweatshirt or reusable bag. But if you haven't been on the website yet, I encourage you to do so. There are a lot of great Centennial items you can purchase. Visit TorrentCentennial.org. And finally, the Torrance Cultural Arts Center Foundation has had gala events since it was founded more than a decade ago. 
And while they've typically held traditional fundraisers over the years, this year guests will be entertained by some familiar faces. Reporter Bianca Palace brings us two more rehearsals for Dancing with the South Bay Stars. Quick, quick, slow, slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Good. Will you be able to read his tango face? Taking on a new identity will be the easy part. Quick, quick, slow, slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow, slow. Michael quick, Ralph quick, will take slow, on a new role slow, to embody sophistication. Slow, right the vice president of Toyota Community Affairs is intensely focused, perfect, back, perfecting the dramatic quick, dance, showing off and new and moves go. for the Schweitzer Finish. Foundation. All right. And step, 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 um, Though soft-spoken, dance instructor up. Alina Sachs will keep their movement slow. steady. The team has upped the ante by choosing to go with the complexity of the Argentine dance, often called the dance of love. Sax said she had planned the mambo to start off easy. Tango is a ballroom dance where you have to have your frame up all the time, and that's uh, a little bit challenging because when I tell my Michael, uh, bring your shoulders down, he brings his elbows down. When I say, bring your elbows up, he brings the shoulders up. For Rouse, the dance is all about setting the mood. I'm even thinking um, of maybe growing a little goatee thing here to help me get into that mood. Um, I, I probably will do that because I want to be completely in character. Hey, Andy. Hey, hey have you been practicing? I have been practicing. All right, well, I have a lot to teach you today, so let's go ahead and just get warmed up. Okay. So let's start with our knees. Let's do the knees, all right. Straightening and bending. Every day, Jeff Williams wears a uniform to serve the Torrance Fire Department. And he has the right moves when it comes to fire safety. But Williams is showing off some different moves as he takes to the dance floor. With the help of partner Mandy Fontaine, Williams will show the audience how to zumba. I knew right away, okay, we have to do like an energetic power pack dance just because he's not a low key guy. He's very alive with life. To the side. Bigger hips than these, huh? <laughs> Hey, no excuses. <laughs> Williams is participating for his charity Greenpeace, but he's also dancing to do something outside of his usual firefighting duties. For me, dancing is just, uh, how should I say, it's kind of liberating. You just, uh, you're kind of free. You're out there having fun. Not thinking about anything else but having fun at the time. These South Bay stars will be heating up the competition with Latin beats and changing the pace with sultry rhythms, not what you might expect from two men with nine to five jobs. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Bianca Palos. And if you'd like to see these South Bay Dancing Stars live, you can still purchase tickets to Dancing with the South Bay Stars on Saturday, February 25th at 8 p.m. For more information, call 310-781-7171 or visit torrancearts.org. And next week, we'll show you Two more contestants who are ready to compete at Dancing with the South Bay Stars. That's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.